talk about some of our, our work. And uh, when I heard about, hear about dam removal, I think about those kind of large projects, and <coughs> I didn't really know what to, to build my presentation on. But uh, it's a lot of focus on fish and the need of fish to boot their habitats and access to the habitats. And <coughs> I work for the Swedish Angler Association, or Sport Fiskarna in Swedish. It's a non-profit organization, and we have about 50 employees and organize some, something of around 60,000 members. And in short, our main <coughs> goal is uh, good fishing in clean waters with healthy fish populations. And uh, we do a lot of different work. I'm going to talk more about work along the Baltic coast. And we actually do have a lot of problems with um, migration obstacles. Uh, <coughs> and so we actually do many things. We remove dams and we actually also build dams. Uh, and I think a lot of focus <coughs> uh, has been on salmon species, but we in our group work a lot with pike and perch and other species in focus. And uh, <coughs> the work actually started with uh, constructing wetlands. And we had some, I have a background as a researcher from, from the Swedish Board of Fisheries, and we had a restoration and evaluation project and and uh, this is a wetland in the southern part of the Sweden and we had <coughs> really nice uh, results on from a few thousand of juvenile pike leaving this area before reaching some several hundreds of juvenile pike after restoring the wetlands uh, Another example is uh, from a colleague of mine in Stockholm. It's uh, one of those small dams that we have a lot of in Sweden. This was some <coughs> some power in this for a long time ago, but more wasn't in use. But kind of uh <coughs> interesting as the pre-data here, we had 17 fish species downside the dam and only one species up up the dam some pictures of the removing process and uh, probably we are a bit guilty for not reporting all the project <laughs> <There>. <laughs> this is the one oh great <laughs> yeah i shouldn't uh, maybe i should stop here and here is uh, almost the final uh, the work is done here with <coughs> both m r the dam is removed and we have also some habitat uh, s stream habitat there instead Uh, the next, uh, I, I give you just a short example here, and then I go through an overview of our work the last years. Uh, <coughs> this is a really nice uh, solution from an, this was a dam, an old dam from the iron industry time, that were replaced by a really nice inlet that is uh, passable for most fish species. But uh, however, we didn't really get any couldn't see any migration of those spring spawning species here like perch and, and pike. Uh, and there were some <coughs> remaining difficult parts of this stream. This is before and this is after. We, with the good help of Johan and his co-workers, we habitat restored this stream to slow down the, 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 the speed to make it easier to, for the fish to migrate also this part of the stretch. And uh, <coughs> those two years here is before the, that restoration part and only we couldn't see ho <coughs> hardly any fish <coughs> in, in the counting system, but directly afterwards we had an immediate response of, of several species. Uh, just giving some good examples and also pinpointing that there are other species than salmonid species uh, <coughs> working their way up the streams. And uh, from, from uh, our organization, the work started around with those projects around 
well, like eight years ago. And I'm just going to go through a few examples with our project and project together with, for example, U1 and Hudiksvall's uh, municipality. And we, <coughs> we usually cooperated with local and re regional authorities. This is a really nice place that you should go visit if you have time over here that U1 has restored. We have helped some with the uh, following update and stuff. So this is uh, <coughs> a good example of an environment that might not seems to be very valuable, but for some species can be really valuable. Uh, and as I mentioned, we've been focused quite a lot of restoring wetlands. Uh, and uh, I give you just a some examples here. This is a small lake that has been restored up here, and here is a uh, migration obstacle that has been removed on the on the island of Gotland. Another example: the upper part is from Gotland on their own <coughs> removal of, of a small dam, and the lower one is. Uh, as a uh, wetland not too far from this area that Johan has been responsible for. Uh, here we have some larger wetland projects uh, on Gotland and south from Stockholm. And quite often also you have to, you cannot do only do the habitat restoration, you must also make sure that you have the migration routes up there that are open for those species. A few other examples from, from Gotland. I have my colleague Joel here, and they have been, he and his colleagues have been very <coughs> working very hard around the island of Gotland. And the lower one here is another example of one of those small, small old dams that has been, uh, uh, we have <coughs> removed the migration obstacle. And uh, those, those projects, do, sometimes we target the uh, trout, but uh, in general, all the species that are in the waters. Uh, <coughs> this is not about dam removal, but the upper one is actually <coughs> where you have lowered the, the land, and that's actually the, <coughs> the history is that we have drained the land a lot. We have removed the wetlands, and here we opened up a migration route, and we, we got an immediate response of fish going up there and juvenile fish produced from that system. And the lower one is a, <coughs> is a wetland construction on, on, Isle, on Öland. And this is uh, one of the more, <coughs> more recent projects uh, down in the southern part of Blekinge, Vamblåsa, a wetland project there. Uh, this is picture from Gävle, not too far south from here, where I work, <coughs> Järvsta Becken, where we do a combination of restoring, or, or not really restoring, but making a wetland, but also removing tree migration obstacles <coughs> and trying to make some habitat for, for the sea trout in, in the currents around the, the small streams around the wetland. And a few projects, projects in the pike in the pipe for the that we have in processing now, uh, including them in this uh, <coughs> summer here. With one really nice example, that is Hamrong Owen, where we're tr going to try to remove tree dams, uh, restore wetlands, and also restore some really nice uh, uh, streams that have been dried out when they. Uh, what do you say, when you ditch out the system to get uh, uh, the water <coughs> out there. So we have some, some good uh, work along the Baltic coast uh, within our organization, targeting not only trout, but particularly pike and perch. Uh, <coughs> this is yeah some kind of summary of the of the most recent work and uh, oncoming work. 
I'm sorry for this one, it's in Swedish, but this is the actual doing of the projects in a kind of a time frame. And we do start with the inventory work to see what has to be done. And we go out and look on the streams uh, for ourselves. And many of those small streams are not in those systems as you presented because they're too small. But we still see that we can have large benefits of improving those waters. We need to contact the landowners. <coughs> we need uh, permission. And this is a really mind. Uh, it's, it's a tough part to get all the permissions to, to do the actual work. Uh, actually, finding the financing is much easier. We have a good flow in that. There are both national and European and local funding. So, but still, it's a long way to before we actually do the work. And we also try to get some some um, data before and after, so we can so we know that we're doing the right right thing. Uh, it's a good uh, timing, I think. <laughs> <laughs>